Hello everybody. This is Chris and I'm from the Zoho Sales IQ technical team. Thank you so much for joining us today for this uh, webinar. And the objective of this webinar, so as you might have seen from the description of the sign up page, is to educate our customers about the various features available inside Sales IQ. We have been continuously introducing several such features for the past several months. You would have seen our blog that listed some of the, the most recent such releases. We will be adding more, but there's no point in releasing these features if our customers are not aware of them. We are still are aware of them, but do not know how to use them. So these customer education or training webinars are specifically targeted at making sure that our customers are able to bring the best out of their sales IQ. As you all know, Sales IQ has two different components to it. One is the live chat capability that allows you to engage with visitors proactively, as well as allow them to contact you to ask any questions, receive support, and so on. So it's a two-way interaction that it allows. And the second module allows you to track them, identify them, see who they are, see what they're up to. And the magical thing about Sales IQ is that although there are different apps in the market that allows you to do one or one or the other, there is hardly any that combines both these two crucial capabilities into one. So we do that here in Sales IQ. And we want to make sure that at least one half of it, the, the live chat and engagement module, is well utilized. So we're going to look at how to make your chat widget attractive enough so it blends in really well with your website, looks very attractive, and at the same time is useful to you by collecting the necessary information that you need from your visitors and how to utilize that information, where to look at that information in Sales IQ and maybe in other Zoho apps. These are all the things that we're going to be looking at. So I will be taking questions and uh, I have a staff here who will be assisting me in answering all the questions. But for me to be able to continue with the webinar uninterrupted, I'm going to have to answer the questions towards the end. But that doesn't mean you have to ask me those questions at the end of the meeting. You can send them in at any time. You see a slide, you have a question, you think I may not have answered it well, or you need some more information, just send in your question. I will answer them all in the order they were asked. They will all be answered. You have my promise. So with that said, let's, let's proceed to uh, the webinar. I will first detail the different things that we will be covering in this uh, meeting. I will be highlighting all the aspects that, uh, or the topics that we will be discussing. I will be listing them one by one here. So in the order of priority, the first one of course is, is something that is often asked of us. How to convert the default green color that's available on the chat widget into something that suits the color and the appearance of your website. So we're going to look at that. And the next, of course, will be the chats, uh, the chat fields that can be customized. Many people were not aware that those fields can be edited or modified. Well, they can be. And not just the stock options that we have in the settings. There are some additional things that you can do, some nice little tricks that you may not have otherwise known. We are going to list them, and we are going to tell you how to activate them or how to make use of them. So that's number two. And number three will be uh, an important aspect. So how do you announce that you're available for chat? Live chat only works if there is somebody on the other side able to answer in real time. So you need to tell your guys, your, your website folks, that you're available to answer the chat in real time. And when you're not, you should be clear enough to tell them that Hey, I'm not right, uh, right, available right now. Just leave me a message or something like that. Maybe you could also tell them when you will be getting back to them so people can expect a response. So these are the things that we can cover here in point three, as well as other things like uh, the greeting messages uh, that are shown on the chat window and so on. So there's a whole list of such messages that can be shown 
to visitors on the chat window, you would have noticed some of them. But what you may not know is that they can all be customized. Those default messages can be customized. And the next, of course, is one of the reasons why this webinar is being held in the first place. All the uh, improvements and uh, capability enhancements that we have done to the chat window, uh, they are pretty subtle that unless you know they are there, you may not have noticed them. So we are going to make sure that we, we lift the blankets of these new releases. Some of them as old as just a few days ago. So we're going to tell you what those features are, where to find them, how to customize them, and most of all, how to use them. This is something important for a lot of you people here. You have more than one website, and both of those websites, or all your websites, obviously look different from each other. Some of them might be dealing with different businesses. So the question was asked often, whether you need to create different sales IQ accounts for different websites. Absolutely not. Each of your sales IQ account, depending on which subscription you hold, can support anywhere from one to 25 different websites. So we're going to see how to put sales IQ on different websites, and more importantly, how to make each one of them look different, or rather suit the website they're on better. That's another important thing we are going to focus on. So just to uh, give you an idea, these five topics will be uh, dwelt in in detail. So we're going to look at every aspect of the customer engagement side of Sales IQ. And we're going to see how best to make it suit your website. So a lot of you may not have seen our old chat widget, but some long timers of Sales IQ probably would have. So here's a preview of the old chat widget on the right side. You can see that. It was a, it looks pretty dated now, I agree. But when it was launched a long time ago, several years ago, it was compact, it was smooth, it was also very, very quick to load back then. And over the years, things have changed, things have improved. So people wanted a much more uh, vibrant looking chat window. So this was the old chat window that our customers used. The old users have been able to upgrade. Most of them have been able to upgrade to the new version at no extra cost. The new ones, the new users who signed up for Sales IQ will be straight away taken to the new version. You won't be seeing this, so you may not have known about this. So. This is where we were, and to see where we got now is a, a tremendous improvement. So once you log into Sales IQ and go from settings to the section called websites, you see these four boxes. Some of you might have been confused by what each of them mean. The first two, of course, deal with the same thing, the tracking and the live chat capability of Sales IQ. So those two. Uh, are what we will be looking at mostly. Number three and number four are also things that we will be looking at, but not in detail. We will be dealing the, with them in a separate segment later on. So once you sign up for Sales IQ, you go to websites, you find your code there, you add it to your website, then what? How do you customize it? So that's where your question begins, and that's where uh, this webinar also begins. So. Once you have added Sales IQ to your website, here's, here's my demo account. I'm just going to give you an example. So you go to websites. If you have multiple websites, they will all be listed here. But uh, in, in the case of most of you, you will have just one. So just click that one single website here. And that will take you to these four boxes that we were talking about. Since we are going to be customizing the live chat widget, you need to click this one, the second one. Here, of course, you will find the code that you need to add to your website if you already haven't. And once you have done that, you need to navigate to the left side to either widget, under which you have customization options for the chat window, chat widget when it's minimized, and then the chat window. 
which customizes how the chat window looks like when the widget has been clicked and expanded. So both these two areas may have been missed by some of you. You may not have noticed them earlier, but here they are. So pretty much everything we will be talking about today are all located here. So this, this is the important aspect that you have to remember. So this is something that people wanted to know. All the information that is collected by from a visitor by the chat window before the chat begins, those are important things that every business need. You need to know who you're talking with. You need to be able to follow up with them later, give them the information they need. You need to be able to uh, convince them, uh, pitch your products to them, and convert them from a lead or a prospect into a customer. To do all this, you need to know who the visitor is. And apart from that, you also need to know other things that would help make this uh, process simpler. So how do you do that? How do you uh, customize the pre-chat form of the chat window, as we call it, uh, to include or collect certain information from your website visitors? To give you an idea of this pre-chat form, I'm going to take you to our demo website. So yes, this. You can see the chat window. We have chosen a different theme here and at the bottom right. So I'm going to click that. And here you can see the chat window expand to list different things here. So this is called the pre-chat form. It, it comes before the actual chat conversation. So it's pre-chat form. You can see that. Normally, we ask for the visitor's name and visitor's email address and then the question. But in this case, since I have multiple departments, each dealing with different aspects of my business, like sales, tech support, and so on, those are also listed. So unless you have different departments, this option won't be listed. So you'll just see the top two and the message box here. So here you can see that email address seems to have been mandated. So there's no way I can skip that field and start a chat. So the pop-up keeps reminding me about that. So why is this important? An email address allows you to contact the customer and follow up with them, put them in your CRM, send them follow-up emails, uh, promotional texts, and other things so that you will be able to keep them within your sales cycle. Otherwise, they will just drift away from your reach and you will never be able to contact them because you didn't know who they were in the first place. The email address allows you to do that. What if you also need the phone number, how to do that? So we're going to look at how to play around with these different fields. So to do that, you need to go to the chat window because, like I said, the minimized version, this one, is called the widget, the chat widget, and this is the chat window. So to customize anything on the chat window, we need to choose this option, as we discussed. So under chat window, you need to go to fields, the third option there. And you can see this option, these options listed here. So let's say I, I don't want to ask people their name. I can just click this button, remove. And you can see that it has disappeared from the preview. So once I press update, it will be updated on my website in real time. So instead of the name field, let's say I want to ask for their phone number. Maybe my business is a sort that doesn't involve emailing back and forth. Maybe I prefer to call people. So I'll ask for the phone number. So since it's that important to me, the phone number field, the email address not so much, I need to make the email address field not compulsory. Yeah and the phone number field compulsory, okay? Which is pretty much the inverse of what it is now. So I go over to this preview here, and you can see as soon as my mouse pointer goes over it, there's this drop-down box with the check mark, mark field as mandatory. So I'm going to uncheck that. If you want it to be, then you check it, of course. Now I go down to the phone number field, this is already unchecked, so I'm going to check that. Okay, so that's it. Now I press update. 
the system confirms that the changes have been done I go to my website refresh and there you go the email address field is no longer compulsory but the phone number field is so every change that I made here is, is updated in real time so it's it's very easy to work with so name email address phone number fields are available by default the name email fields are already active but they're not compulsory you need to come here to either make them compulsory or add an additional field like the phone number field there is also the optional newsletter subscription capability which is made available if you use either uh, zoho campaigns or mailchimp so i know that most of you use zoho campaigns it's simpler to use uh, it's value for money but there are some of you who have been using mailchimp for a long time and prefer to continue with it so whichever of the two that you want choose it we don't force anything on you so what this option does here is as you can see there's a checkbox at the bottom of the chat window that allows people to check the box should they want to receive a newsletter a promotional email or something like that so you're basically obtaining their consent before you start sending out emails which is a good thing to do especially for those of you who are joining us from the european union you do have to understand that the the gdpr regulations that are coming into force demand that you legally obtain somebody's consent digitally or otherwise before you can send them emails or any other promotional material you cannot send them uh, material unsolicited that's what the law says and we have made sure that we have, we have made this capability available to everybody not just eu uh, users so it's a good idea to ask people their permission before you can send them these emails that way your emails and your uh, material will be much better received so the next question that's asked is okay the name email phone number fields are all cool the newsletter uh, sign up is also cool but what if i need more information than that what if my business needs some information that i may not be able to get from either sales iq or from these three fields we completely understand that so there's a way to add additional fields uh, for various purposes we're going to see how we do that and how they would look like once they've been implemented. So here's a couple of samples based on the emails that we have been getting from customers, the phone calls we have had with them. So we have just picked the top most chosen uh, such custom fields that people want. So this is one option, a drop down field. Remember, we, we, we showed you this drop down here for the department this is already available by default in the chat window so you can choose which department you want to chat with but the same option can be made available for other things let's say you have a travel website and a visitor needs to fill up the chat form to chat with you and they need to choose the travel destination you can see the custom field there and since we're just demonstrating we have only three places there so the customer chooses Paris and then they start the chat with you. So what happens is you obtain the person's name, you obtain the person's email and an additional piece of information, which is their preference. So depending on what your business is, let's say it's a real estate, uh, you can put in different options there, like uh, what kind of uh, you know real estate are you looking at? A ranch, an apartment, a condo, anything you can just put them down there and what it does is it makes your conversation that much more efficient so when the chat window comes in i'll give you a sample here uh, we don't have a live chat going on so i'm just going to go over to the chat history to show you a sample so inside the chat history let's pick any chat here this one on the top right corner you will be able to see what information the visitor enter so you see the sent campaign info here just above that this additional custom fields data 
will be populated. So the, the title of the field, choose your travel destination, that will be shown here, followed by the choice made by the customer, which is Paris, in this case, the city of Paris. So you'll have that information here. So as an agent, when I'm communicating with this visitor, I already know which website, uh, which travel destination this customer is interested in. And if I want to go over the entire visit history of this customer, I can just pull up their information from here, whoever that visitor is. And if I analyze all their behavior on my website, I can see all the pages they looked at. This is just a demo website, so there's not many pages you can, but in a real website, you will have lots of pages that you can see the visitor navigating from and to. So if I notice that they've been looking at the Paris as well as another destination, maybe Rome for that matter, and then they settle for just Paris. During my conversation with the customer, I can probably tell them that, uh, you know what? If you pay $10,000, you can go to Paris, but if you pay an extra $2,000, you can actually do Paris and Rome together. So the customer is most likely to say yes, because they've been looking at both of them and they probably chose only one city because they couldn't afford the other. Maybe the price on your website works out to $18,000, both cities together. Just giving you an example, it's too expensive, I know. But in this, combo offer that you're giving them, there's a huge discount of about $6,000, which makes them feel that they've gotten a very, very good deal. So that's a very productive conversation they had from their side. From your side, instead of signing up a customer for one tour, you've, you've put them on two different cities. So that's much more profitable for you. If the customer had a very good first experience with you, they're very likely to, to come back again at the least and at best, will be bringing their friends and family uh, the next time. And of course, they will be doing free word of mouth advertisement for you. So, so many, uh, you, you know, trickle down uh, benefits are there by simply knowing and doing what your customers want. So, just knowing what they need and seeing what they also need, but probably didn't have the heart to ask you, you have been able to give them a brilliant experience. So this is just a sample. You can customize the field to read anything else. There are a whole list of options that are possible. Before I tell you how to do that, let's look at another example. These are useful in other cases. For instance, this one, zip code. So you don't want people to enter uh, invalid information accidentally. So you need to restrict certain fields to certain alphabets or certain characters. So in this case, you can restrict this particular zip code field to only accept numerals or numbers, simply put, so that the chances of people accidentally entering incorrect information, uh, they could mistake it for uh, you know, their email address or a name or something like that. They could mix up company name and zip code, try and enter the company name and zip code. So by restricting access to these fields, you will be able to avoid such accidental submissions. And you would have also noticed the company name information about that. So these are the things that you can ask from your customer or your visitor or a prospect before they connect with you on the chat. And there are lots of other possibilities too. Some of you uh, would want other things like what are you looking for or what kind of, uh, if it's a, a HR web website where people can apply for jobs, maybe the options would ask them to list their experience, the, the, the type of profile they're looking at, a lot of things there, a lot of possibilities exist. So we allow you to choose different types of fields and restrict their uh, input criteria, as we call it, so that incorrect information may not even be accidentally entered. So that's one thing. Again, when you connect with the visitor on the chat, that information will be uh, shown to you on the top right corner. Additionally, if you go to your CRM 
and if you add a separate let's take this customer uh, this, this visitor let's go to their CRM record so some of you would say well this is valuable information the company name the zip code I want that to not just be in the sales psyche but also to be pushed to this person's CRM record absolutely so what you need to do is you can see how we have opened this person's CRM record here all you need to do is create a separate custom field okay so many of these fields that you see here are default fields they're going to be available for everybody but CRM allows you to create custom fields all you need to do is create a field with the same name as the one on your chat window so if it says zip code here it should say zip code and CRM it shouldn't say zip uh, it shouldn't just say postal code it should be an exact match when it's an exact match after the chat completes on sales IQ apart from other information like this entire transcript and their website activities sales IQ will push this custom field data into this custom field on CR so then the next time a salesman pulls out this person's record to follow up he will find both these information there so remember there should be an exact match between the between the custom field name on the chat window here and on CRM and if your sales circuit is integrated with CRM it will push this information to CRM so that's pretty straightforward and another option remember I told you here in sales IQ under websites there were four different options we have been looking at the live chat widget and how to customize it and trust me we are not done and I also told you that we will be briefly looking at the other two features here what we are looking at now is live chat for emails so if you click that you will see these so whatever you choose here is what will be applied here so what is live chat for emails it was formerly called a signature chat remember how you insert a signature into your emails usually it has your website URL your phone number your fax uh, your social media links things like that it's always present on your email so whenever you reply to somebody you don't have to bother putting those there they are inserted by your email service automatically it gives you the basic information for people to reach out to you other than an email it also encourages them to check out your website and other things so they get to know more about you and your company so what we have done is we have taken the live chat on your website a step further and we decided that we can also put it on emails so once you integrate this signature chat or live chat for emails as we call it now to your emails to your email services depending on whichever theme or button that you choose here okay I'm just going to go with the second one because that's what we have used uh, we have used in this image here so that icon will show up on the chat window or on on the email editor window here so any visitor or any customer you've been interacting with on the email will be able to quickly get in touch with you at the click of a single button they just click this button and it opens up a chat window and they communicate with you instantly what's the point of doing this if you're thinking let me answer that you can either go back and forth over an email and have a long conversation that might stretch over several days they might be located in a different time zone and you might be in a different time zone by the time you see the email and reply to it it's going to take time but unlike an email which is just going to be one among the many in your inbox a live chat is instantaneous once they click this button you will be notified and you will have to pick up the chat either on your phone or on your computer or on your uh, desktop apps any one of them so you will be able to have an entire conversation in the span of 15 20 minutes instead of several working days so you're using an existing system 
to speed up another uh, older system, in which case th the emails. So it's simple to insert. The steps to do them are right here on the signature chat or the live chat for email apps page. So you can see the steps for Zoho email, uh, Zoho desk, Zoho CRM, Gmail, Outlook. You can just click any one of these it's and you can ready. find the instructions to add the signature chat code to your email signatures. It's, in, it's pretty much the same uh, process as doing it on uh, any other email signature. Normally you add a piece of text, sometimes you add uh, links to your social media profiles, your website, maybe even a picture sometimes, your company logo maybe. Instead of those, you just add this. Or maybe in addition to those, you can also add this. It's, it's not mutually exclusive. You can have this signature chat button as well as your regular email signature as well. You can see this person as regards patriciazulko.com. So you can have both together. If you're not available for chat, this icon won't be green in color, as you can see in the preview here. The one on the top is when you're online. The one at the bottom is when you're away. So it's gray. In that case, when they click this button, they will be told that you're away. And if you've customized that away message, it will also tell them when you will be back. So they won't be sending you a message when you're not around. So you don't have to worry about that. So here's a sample. They click this button here that's highlighted. It's going to open up the chat window uh, on the on the top. Of course, the, the appearance of the signature chat has been modified now. So it's going to look even better than what we have here. So this, of course, is one of the reasons or the main, the main reason you're here. We need to look at the different chat widget customization options available. So you get to pick which ones uh, you need to use on your website. Uh, if you noticed earlier, this was on our website. So this round icon is what we used. The demo website, however, add this one. So there are lots of themes available. We have this uh, picture here. So, sort of uh, giving you an insight into the different themes that are available. So some of these, like you see here, are the widgets when they are minimized. So this is the one similar to the one we have on the uh, demo website. Uh, these two are also widgets. Some of them are smaller. Some of them, like this, are bigger. So those of you who have we we'll prefer to have a larger chat widget so it's easier for your visitors to, to notice them quickly. You can choose one of these. Those of you who have uh, a rather uh, busy website with a lot of content on it could probably choose something more compact like this or this one. We also have previews of how the chat window looks like depending on how which theme that you choose. So this one, for instance, uh, you can see uh, this person has chosen to show their own picture here. Mostly a one-person business, I presume. So that is all the person you will get to talk always. So it's easier to show, show your own image there. In our case, however, we have, we have decided to show the company logo, as would many other companies when you have a lot of staff. So you can choose your company logo to be here or the person's image as shown here. In other cases, you can see on this chat window, for instance, uh, the logo is here and the company logo has been used, the same here as well. So different options available here. So we, I just decided to put them all in one place so you get to compare one from the other. But don't worry, we have given you a preview of these capabilities inside your sales IQ. So just to give you an idea of where to locate them, like I said, it's all in the same place under live chat widget. So to choose the widget themes, you go to widget, you go down to appearance, and you see them here. So different themes, and depending on what you choose, you will be able to see the preview on the right side. 
And if you want to compare, if you want to uh, see how it's going to look on, on your mobile device, you can choose that. And if you want to see how this will look when you're offline, you can see that too. So there's, there's an option on the top here that allows you to toggle between online and offline views. So a whole list of themes are available. Each one of them have been meticulously tested to make sure that they do not break on different devices. In other words, a widget that's designed to load perfectly on a large screen may not do so on a small screen. There might be some issues. So we have taken care to make sure that such issues have been ironed out. So everything that you see here will work properly on both the desktop, a laptop, as well as smaller devices like phones, your smartphones. So a whole list of customization options are available. You can just keep toggling through them. And uh, if you want, if you don't like any of these, then you can also upload your own chat widget sticker, as we call it. So to do that, just scroll down below these uh, images or these themes to this option. Uh, choose or upload your own chat widget sticker and turn it on. Once you do, you will be able to upload images. I've already done them to save you some time on this webinar now. So you can see two different images. One, when I'm online, like the thumbnail says, upload online image. And another one, when I'm offline. So you can see that here, there's a preview. And when I'm offline, it loads my offline image here. So you can upload any image that you want. We will just advise you to make sure that the image is not too big. If you upload a large image, what happens is we load it as it is. We do not compress it because sometimes some images are not friendly to compression. So we have not compressed any images. So because of that, if you upload a large image, it's going to take over a quarter of your screen or maybe half. So it will block the rest of the content from your website from showing. So it's necessary that you resize your image to this optimal size. And there's, of course, a size restriction as well, 10 MB, but images are rarely more than a, a tenth of 10 MB. So that shouldn't be a problem. So you get to upload any image. If you have an inbuilt in-house designer, you can have them design something that is themed around what your website makes. Uh, or you can also buy stock images from the internet and use them. That's up to you. So all these things can be done if you turn on this option. Otherwise, we, you can stick with our default themes that have been tested and perfected to work on different devices. You also get to choose the position of the chat window uh, wherever you want. So uh, let me go back to the one that I'm using on the website. The default position is at the bottom right. But let's say that uh, you already have a button there uh, Yes, a website. Let's say you already have a button there, maybe a, a sign up form. Uh, some of you may have a button that uh, uh, allows visitors to quickly go to the top of the page. So if you don't want it to overlap those buttons, you can simply go here, go to this option, choose a location, and reposition your chat window to however you want. So I'm, I'm just going to choose this extreme left side and click update. And once I go to my website and refresh, note that at the moment it's at the bottom right, but after refreshing, it's here. So depending on how your website is designed, you can choose different positions so that the chat window is approachable. The default position is always the bottom right because most people are right-handed and are comfortable looking at things at the bottom right. So that's there. The chat window, of course, will allow you to choose between different themes as well. So go to chat window appearance. We have a whole list of options to choose from, including this uh, pretty ingenious theme. It's called Lloyd. And, and although it looks black in color now because it needs to be contrasted with the background, it's actually a transparent uh, chat window. Just to give you an idea, I just refresh that and I go to my website this semi-transparent chat window 
we'll be able to show content behind the screen. So I'm just going to drag it and keep it here. And you can see that uh, the text and the images behind the chat window are still visible as I scroll up and down. So it's useful in cases where your website has a lot of content on it, maybe a media playing in the background. You don't want people to minimize the chat window each time to be able to see what's behind it and then pull it back up to chat with you. This way, they will be able to continue the conversation at all times. So this option is semi-transparent. Anything more transparent than this, people won't be able to see the text on the chat window. So we'll try to strike a balance. So there are lots of different themes available, whole list of them. And you can customize their colors here, just as you can for the widget. And we also give you three different sizes. A few customers had asked this specifically. They said that their business dictates that customers will have to exchange a lot of text with their personnel. So in other words, in simple English, their customers and their staff talk a lot in the chat, several paragraphs. So if it's going to be difficult for you to fit all of them in the in this chat window size here, we have given you a larger size, which basically increases the height of the chat window by about 25%. So you can fit more text on the same window without having to scroll up and down uh, often. If you don't like that, there's also a smaller option, which is a very minimal profile that you can choose. But the default size is medium. So you can either expand the size or reduce it. And we also allow you to choose the option to upload your company logo here, as well as the user's image. These are also certain things that people have been asking us. So to upload your company profile, you need to go to settings, company, here. And on the right side, you see this big rectangular image. Just click this camera icon here and upload your company logo. So if you have enabled that option there on the websites, the company logo will show. If you want your own uh, image to appear when you chat with somebody, then you need to do that under my profile. So settings, this is outside settings. So you go to my profile and on the left side, click upload photo or change photo if you've already uploaded a photo and then set your display image. This will show up to website visitors. So a whole list of customization options are available for both the widget and the website. And they're all listed here. So these are some of the, the latest releases to the Sales IQ widget. Some of them have been already there, but we have revamped them. So I'm just going to go over them quickly. So this is the button chat widget. So just to give you an idea, you would have noticed this option earlier. Float is what we normally use on the website. The difference is that as you move up and down, it floats with you. But what if you need a button, something like this one. You can see on this page, there's no chat window here. You don't see it anywhere. So if you want to affix the chat window widget to somewhere specifically like this one, you can just do that using the button widget. And when I click the button widget, it opens up the chat window, wherever it is located. So until I do that, the chat window will not pop up. Some people prefer this. Most others prefer this floating window, which stays in the same place as you scroll up and down. So it's really your matter of preference. But I've given an example here. So this is your uh, standard McDonald's website. So if you go to their website, you can see here at the bottom right, uh, under titled uh, customer service, there's a link that says get in touch with us. Clicking that normally takes you to a screen from where you can send an email which is not particularly fast. But if you're a sales IQ user and you want to replace this piece of text that says get in touch with us, 
with the live chat button, you can do that. So I'm basically referring to this get in touch with us option at the bottom right. So you can position a chat window, chat widget, like this. So once you choose button, we have different button options here, so many of them. And you can have your web developer modify the code of Sales IQ to exactly position the button wherever you want it. So that's what the button widget does. Just in case you had questions about this option under widget. So float is the default option. Button is what we just checked. There's also the personalized chat widget, if you've noticed. Normally, you have a single chat window. When you fill the information up there, it is notified to all the, the staff members in your company. Any one of them can pick and answer that. And you will then be able to see who they are. But in smaller businesses, when you have only fewer people, it would be a good idea for you to use a personalized chat widget, which looks something like this. So when you visit somebody's website, you can see at the bottom right corner, there are separate chat windows or widgets for each of the users there. So instead of a unified chat window, you have a dedicated personal chat window for each user. They are arranged like a deck of cards, as you can see there, uh, one behind the other. So clicking that would expand them like this. You can choose to show either three widget windows or just two, depending on how much space there is on the website. If you do that, you can see how uh, there's a brief description of each user there. So it, it explains what they're doing in the company, what, what things they're taking care of. So you know which one to chat with. Sometimes you might want to go with the marketing guy, sometimes with maybe the legal department, anything that you want. So you just pick and choose the person you want to chat with. And once you do that, then you go back to this window where they fill up the information. But in this case, this chat is only sent to the person they chose. So let's say they chose uh, Messi, the second one there. After filling the information, the chat will be only sent to Messi, nobody else. So that is personalized chat widget. It's useful when you have a smaller number of employees specializing in different things. And number two, you want the visitors to decide who they want to chat with. So that's what Personalized Chat Widget does. And you can activate that by going to Widget Personalized. This was also another capability that was requested. So instead of merely chatting with the visitor, what if you're able to see what they're doing on the screen? If you're a technical support representative, this is a godsend. Instead of merely giving them instructions and sending uh, screenshots, you can actually connect to their screen and take control of it, fix the problem for them, and get off it. That is option number two, which is request visitor to share screen. Option one is where, as a presenter, maybe you're a marketing guy, uh, somebody just asked you for a demo on the chat, you want to just click this option and then show them your screen. Show your product, show your services, uh, play your video, whatever it is. They will be able to see it and they will be able to chat with you. And when you're done, you get off it and resume with this chat. So two-way screen chatting is available. You can broadcast your screen to somebody you've been chatting with, or you can connect to the person on the other end, take control of the computer and fix different things. This capability is powered by Zoho Assist, another Zoho product. And if your usage is very high, you need multiple sessions for multiple users, you can use their paid services, which are much more affordable than all their competitors in the market. So this capability is available by default to all users, although there are restrictions depending on which kind of subscription you have. Sales IQ free users, of course, will not be able to access this capability. So this is what the visitor will see on their side if they want to uh, share their screen voluntarily instead of trying to send you screenshots. They click the button next to the terminate session button here and they will be able to see this option. So that's 
inbuilt screen sharing. Conversation view was also a new feature that was recently added. You would have noticed it on your chat windows. The objective behind this is uh, basically repeated requests where customers were telling us that their customers were asking them the same questions again and again. They just probably forgot that they asked the question or maybe they misplaced the, the chat transcript they received or just didn't bother checking it out. So they need to be reminded about it. So this sort of uh, does that subtly. So when they try to start a chat conversation with you, they will be able to see this screen first. They can look at all the images of the people they have chatted with. So these are all your support representatives. They can see who they chatted with. They can see the, the title of the question and they can see when the chat was actually done. So it could be several days ago, it could be several months ago, that will be shown on the right side. So let's say they click on one of that and it's the same question they had now. They will be able to see it, follow the steps and that fixes the problem. So even before they could get in touch with you on the chat, your chat window helped fix the problem for them. So that's, that's wonderful and doesn't take any of your time. But if they feel that this is a completely new conversation touching a new topic altogether. They just click this button that's been highlighted here at the bottom right corner. And that will take them to the standard chat window from where they can chat with you. So this is the thing. So while they are filling up this information, let's say they again have questions and they want to go back to the previous screen. They click this button here, show all and it takes them back here. So that's conversation view, giving your website visitors a sneak peek on the entire chat history conversation they've had with you. They won't be able to see the other chats somebody else had with your staff, just what they add from that computer. Yeah, so this is another important task that we need to uh, complete before we wrap up. When you look at the chat window, a question that's often asked of us is, uh, is especially for those of you who operate in different countries, different languages, sometimes texts like enter your name, your email address and so on, may not be translated perfectly in another language, or it may not mean the same thing in another language. So, our systems may have literally translated the text, but you might want something else that uh, is much more, uh, let's say, friendly or respectful in your culture. There are also different versions of the same language spoken in the same country. So some might be respectful and some may not be. So in those cases, we do have the option of editing this text that is done using a JS API. It's the same way you also add custom fields. There is a help page that gives you uh, a list of all the JS APIs that you can find. You just go to your, you go to our website, go to uh, resources on the top right corner and scroll down to developer section here. Under developer section, you have JavaScript APIs or JS APIs. So if you click this, you will be able to see all the custom API scripts that will allow you to do a variety of things on chat, on the chat window. And one of them, of course, is to add custom fields as well as editing the text on the fields, the labels rather. So most of your web developers will be able to take care of it. Each of the, the aspects are explained very clearly here. In case you don't have a web developer, you can always contact our staff, tell us what the name of the field should be, uh, what kind of drop downs it should be, and our staff will draft or uh, create the code for you and give it to you. All you need to do is just paste it on your website, something you've already done for the regular sales IQ code. So don't worry if you don't have a web developer, our staff will be able to help you. If you have one, just give them a link to this it's found on our website under, this, under the title JS API documentation. So just go there, give this link to them, they'll know what to do. 
Otherwise, tell us what field you need. Give us the names and the specifics. Just email it to us, contact us on chat. Anything is fine. And we will send it back to you. So it's pretty simple that way. So just to rephrase, it's possible to customize the appearance of the chat window. It's possible to customize the fields displayed on the chat window, name, email address, and so on. It is also possible to add additional fields like zip code, company name, uh, any other information that you want, and have that data pushed into CRM automatically. And you can add a shortcuts to your outgoing emails so people can quickly communicate with you without having to go over and over uh, with your emails. And then it's also possible to uh, do a variety of things with the messages show on, shown on the chat window. So you can just customize the appearance. This one here that says we are online. It's a whole lot of things that are possible under the dedicated widget and chat window sections. You can do all of them here. We've also seen the different types of chat widgets. That's the floating one, the fixed one called the button that you fix to a certain spot. Uh, so people need to click a button on that page to activate the chat window. If they scroll down to the bottom of the page, they won't see the chat button there unless they go back up, depending on where you've positioned it. There's also the personalized chat window that allows them to choose which person or user they're going to chat with. And they're all activated by going to widget and choosing between any one of these. Except float and personalized, button needs to be edited by your web developer so that he can tell this widget button where to be positioned exactly. If, the, if you don't do that, the widget just randomly sits anywhere on the website. You need to specify its exact position on the code so it knows where to be positioned. So that's about the important things that we covered. Thank you for your time and thank you for staying with me. Goodbye.